Hello everyone, my name is Rajesh Kumar and I'm your DevOps SRE DevSecOps coach. Okay, so first thing today we are going to learn AWS. So this is a very vast course, but we'll convert into the multiple sessions so that will become easier for everyone. <clears throat> now, first thing, what is AWS? So if you look at the full form, a for Amazon, <clears throat> W for web, and S for service. That means AWS is a website. Web means website. Amazon means company name. So this is a website and providing certain services, which is based on the web service. It means website services. Now, next thing you will ask, what kind of services they provide? what kind of services so more or less we call it cloud services okay but i'll put it in this way services which is of infrastructure as a services platform as a services you no know? <clears throat> software as a services function as a services Container as a services many different different types of services They provide over the website internet by Amazon and that is a That is all about the AWS platform. So now next question is what is a IAS? Pass SaaS and all stuff like that. So let's understand through the some example This is the one image we will look at it This one or anything you can use this one any image is okay okay so here if you look at this here in this image this is the infrastructure as a service so that means there's a company in our case amazon they will provide the networking over the internet storage over the internet servers means virtual servers over the internet Virtualization technology all this thing which we which I taught you in the virtual box and all That technology they will provide on the internet So they will give you the basically compute unit compute and storage unit and you decide what operating system you want Inside operating system what you want to install middleware and runtime and What data you want to store and what application you want to run so complete remaining things you have to take care of it you manage it and Amazon will manage your hardware part. This is a hardware you can see. Are you understanding all of you? Yes. But they do provide the platform as a service also. So here in the platform as a service, there are many services uh, in which they will provide you up to the runtime and you have to take care of the data and applications. And there are a few services also they provide where you do nothing just consume the applications so they will take care of each and everything from the end to end that's called software as a service like a gmail is a software as a service uh, linkedin is a software service you don't worry about how the linkedin is running but still you are using it like that but here in a platform as a service they will give you the runtime environment but you can develop your own you can store your own data develop your own app like uh, service now sap and all so that is the stuff so these are the we call it a cloud models cloud models uh, for implementing that so these are the models these are the services which is provided by amazon over the internet simple understood all of you yeah so now next question is next question is <clears throat> how Amazon works How Amazon works so basically what what they do they have divided entire world into the region okay. Because every you know there are so many 200 plus countries are there in the world 200 governments 200 policies 200, 200 guidelines and all so it's very difficult to you know manage all this because it's a internet-based services, right? So they want to give you the services worldwide global 
but there are so many governments policies they have to adhere that so what aws has done it they have set up the data center for providing all the services in a certain part of the world they call it region so let me show you here just go to the aws and put the region that's all go to the image open up any images actually in this way well. okay and look at this here they have so many regions available around the globe where they have a data center in india we have a two places in mumbai and hyderabad okay so look at this uh, uh, check out your countries uh, and see that we are closer to maybe in usa uk australia japan and all kind of things south america we have only one okay so this is something which you have it so these are the regions so these are the regions amazon have set up a data centers so when you use their applications the customers will be close to their data centers so this is called region okay now let me show you how many regions we have in real this is the aws i've logged in i'll come back to this I, I i want to keep showing you so you get comfortable see these are the regions we have so through, through this website you can connect to any regions from one console only centralized console you can connect see here uh, these are the regions which is active in my account and these are the regions which is not active right now in my account though you want to request send a request and they can activate it so like that so so many regions we have and stuff like that understood all of you what is region hello yeah next one is you should know also availability zone okay availability zone what is availability zone simple as you you if you try to focus on the meaning of keyword availability that means if i want to run my application it should be highly available all the time if amazon wants to run some of their application it should be available so what has happened let me put it up in this way uh let's say there is a one region okay let's focus on the one region this is one region and they have a one data centers here okay they, uh, these are the servers clusters and all it's running and let's say if you're from bangalore let's say it's located in uh, uh, whitefield okay there's one area in bengaluru that's called whitefield lots of companies are there so it's located in whitefield now because of some region some region means uh, tsunami tsunami will come in bangalore i think no because it's not uh, near to sea but yeah uh, rain uh, yesterday day for yesterday we had a rain the lots of issues with that so maybe terrorist attack earthquake tsunami riots anything may happen and in any ways if you just imagine if you if you lose the this data center millions of customers data will be lost don't you think so hello hello yeah so so what to do in the in 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 these cases so what amazon has done it in the same region let's say mumbai region or san jose region same region they have set up a two data center and the distance it's separate this is a few kilometers of maybe multiple kilometers 10 20 100 50 it depends on them and they say hey this is a one data center the one region and you have a two zone zone one zone two minimum you'll have a two zone okay so and mind it here mind it here there's very important things to understand zone one and zone two is connected through the lan i'm putting in a very simple way i'm saying lan lan means Fiber. Ah. Ah, that means 
that means when you serve your application i'll put it in a more simpler way that means when i serve your application run one ec2 instance one virtual machine here and run virtual machine here and then load balance these two virtual machines and then serve to the end user so if some because of some reason one is down this will be still serving your traffic so this is a zone we call it in a one region minimum you have a two zone maximum you can have a, i've seen up to uh, five actually five or six six sorry six regions availability zone if you see that here look at this these are the region one region two and inside the region in this here you have four availability zone here we have three availability zone now if you look at this very carefully this image is not clear but yellow line so this each each availability zone they have connected with the fiber i mean because conceptually if you say lan same network it's the same network actually so these all are a zone in the one network these all zones in one network understood all of you yes hello okay so now you understood that what is region what is availability zone now the next question is how to get started how to get started so nothing uh, don't complicate your mind first of all all are web services website see anyone taught you linkedin no anyone taught you facebook no you learned it yourself it's so the same way website aws is a website just log in and get started with it so here if you log in here aws and you have to register with a free trial account where is a free trial account let me show you aws free tier now free tier will give you lots of advantage lots of services will be free up to the one, one year okay up to the one year so see here free trials is available for 12 month and always free some of the services are always free by the way when you say 12 months free that means don't jump and start using it because not everything is free they am they have made it free only the services so you can learn not not to run your applications in a large scale okay so understand that way it's for learning actually nothing else now you have to check it out what is free and what is not free and again this is a very important because you must check it out and then use it others tomorrow should not come and say rajesh because of you my credit card was charged this much of money you should be very careful okay so you should not, it's not like you should get scared you should not try but you should study which is free which is not free which one which one i should use it which one i should uh, ignore for time being so mind it that way so here you have a completed details actually if you study compute storage databases machine learning and many things hell lot of things remember that aws is very vast 5000 services are there even i'm using from last uh, 12 to 15 years i think aws 12 years and still i i am hardly knowing around 150 services at max not more than that so please remember that so don't try to focus on everything just try to learn what you can use of it so here you have to register an account create a free account yes you need to have a credit card uh, they will not charge you credit card but they want the whether the user is valid or not they want to validate from that so here you registered and start using it are you comfortable all of you yeah okay so once you registered with website and you get an account okay so just like this you get an account like this this is a url after login okay and here these are the services i visited and welcome page and you can see that this is not a big things here but if you look at this here look at the left side is this your services no these are the categories of services so as i said aws is very vast so many things you have and you might not need all of it let's say machine learning are you working no iot are you working no web development i don't know maybe you are working okay developer tool management and governance tool media services you know robotics satellite many things we have actually so these are the categories and if you click on the let's say one category which is called compute 
Then again, these are the subcategories. And in the subcategory, you click on the let's say EC2, which is virtual server in the cloud. Look at this. I taught you virtual servers, how to create a virtual server using the virtual box. Now, today, I'll teach you how to create a virtual servers in the cloud. This is something which I will teach you. Are you understanding all of you? Yes. So what are the services we should target? So fundamental, we call it foundation services of AWS. When you anyone start logging to the AWS, they had to learn. Everyone have to learn some foundation services. What? Compute. Then one, one in storage. Not everything, one in storage. And then after that, networking. After that, uh, security. Okay, so these are the foundation services I'll teach you. And after that, there are so many services. I just said 5,000 services are there. So based on the requirement, you can get into it. So I compute just now I clicked and here there's so many services again, categories. I don't want in this, I'll teach you only EC2 right now. Here in compute, EC2. In storage, I'll teach you two, three, uh, EBS, EFS, and S3. What is this here? Look at the storage here. Click on it. EFS is here, S3 is here, and EBS you will get it under the compute only. Here. Here. Networking, I'll teach you VPC and many more. And security, IEM and all kind of things, I'll teach you. So this this services which I am talking about is a foundation services of AWS. Are you understanding all of you? All of you? Yes. Yeah. So now what is EC2? So in full form is elastic cloud compute in simple way virtual machines. Don't complicate yourself. VMs, that's all. The same VM I asked you to create in the last time using virtual box. Same VM I'm creating on Azure or Azure or AWS or Google Cloud. Or if you have a private data center, same VM you will create in a private data center. Why you will create a VM? Because you want to run applications. You want to store some data, you need storage. Because this VM is not permanent, m -feral. It's a it's a short term. You destroy the VMs, data is gone. So we want to make it the data persistence. Remember yesterday I taught you in the Docker, I guess, data pers persistency using volume, if you remember. Hello? Yes. So different, different types of storage and then networking and security. So let's get started. So what we are trying to do now, I'm going to create a one Linux VM and access it. I'm going to create one Windows VM and access it. How? Let me show you. So go to this services, EC2. And right now you see one instance is running for me. Uh, you see here elastic IPs are there, load balancers are there, instances are there, key pair is a security groups and all, all this thing I'll explain it here. So this one should be, okay, just a second. Give me two seconds. Hmm. Okay, so let it be there. I'm I'm destroying through the Terraform. So now what I'm going to do? So I'm going to create a one instance. Look at it my screen very carefully. Click on launch instance. Instance means virtual machine. Okay. And here, and I must tell you one thing don't rush don't rush to click check write read it each and everything just read it so many things you have to read it so here i'll create one box let's say ubuntu linux i'll call it linux only and then after that you have to select the image remember that last time 
while creating a VMs, we had an ISO image. So here that image we call it a AMI, Amazon Machine Image. Now, if you see that they have a quick start tab, my AMIs, recent AMIs, you can browse that and thousands of AMIs you get it. These are the quick start. So you can select here Amazon Linux, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, Mac, all these things depends. So let's say I'll go for Windows. Okay. So Windows we have and then Ubuntu server. Here you have. So you selected here AMIs to create a VM. Now here you are selecting the type. What is a type in, in AWS instance? So type will define how much CPU you want and how much RAM you want. So what AWS has done, they have created a template of type. So based on the type you select, they will you will have a created CPU and all. So T2 nano means one CPU, half GB RAM. Micro means one CPU, one GB RAM. T2 small means one CPU, two GB RAM. So like that you can go and cost will increase accordingly. So let's say I'll go for T2 micro, one CPU, one GB RAM. And the cost also you can see that here. Per hour cost you have it actually. By the way, there is one AWS calculator. Let me show you. Here also you can work on it and decide your cost. You can, you know, find out your cost this website okay so now next one is key pair what is key pair so guys when you when you create a vm with the help of aws so the question is how do we log in because you are in bengaluru somewhere sometime some somewhere or maybe hyderabad or maybe london so how do you log in so aws will give you the ip address but they should give you the password also right or keys so yes, AWS don't give you the keys by default. They give you the, uh, sorry, uh, don't give you the password by default. They give you the key. Okay, so key here, you have to create a new one. Or if you have already created, you can use the existing one. So right now, because I'm teaching you, I want to you to create a new one. So here, key type, name of the key, let's say Sunday, May, this is my key for for this session now what is the type of key rsa go for it again if you don't understand what is rsa ed2 to, to stuff like that you can do a little bit of separate reading now this is a private rsa key type format pm format and ppk format now if you read it pm is for open ssh ssh if you are trying to connect to the boxes using ssh pm is needed ppk is for the putty okay by the way, if you download PM, you can convert to PPK. You have PPK, you can convert to PM. Both are possible. Okay, so that is something. So because I want to use for putty, I want to teach you through the putty, so PPK. But if you want to use for SSH hyphen blah, 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 then you can do, do for PPK and create a key pair. Now key pair will be downloaded. Remember that you have a private key, they have a public key. Okay, so private keys is with you. So if key is compromised, you cannot blame AWS for that. Private key is important. So here is in download directory, you got it. Are you comfortable with it? This one key? Yes. After this, this is a networking setup. Right now, I'll ask you to ignore this. Let it be default. Okay, what is the networking and all? I'll discuss a little bit later. Now, this is very important. We call it security groups in simple terminology, which is called firewalls. Okay, this is called firewalls. So what is a firewall? So guys, there are two kinds of uh, firewalls we have in AWS. I mean, everywhere, in fact. One is OS level firewall, which you know very well. Okay, in your operating system, also there is a firewall which port should be allowed, which port should not be allowed, which is outgoing, which is incoming, everything you can decide. That's called firewall. Now, at a network level also, you have a firewall. I don't know how many of you have noticed that. Have you ever logged into your router? Anyone? Anyone have logged into router? Yes. Yes. So you should check that actually. 
when you have logged into router with the password admin i think admin admin or something like that uh, if you not change so you will see that one firewall is at a network level also device level so there also so what is this what firewall is this so this is a network level firewall yes so most of the time what we do uh, os level firewall we disable it and we manage all the networking i mean incoming and outgoing through the network level firewall in aws or in in fact azure we call it security groups so here you want to create a new security group or you want to use existing one is up to you one security group is needed and which firewall to open which firewall not to open and all stuff like that now this is the one thing here you cannot specify the security group name earlier it was option was there i mean two months before i guess they have changed the ui i guess and here at a high level you want to change allow ssh of course you have to allow because without that you can't can't access http https and other port if you want to allow you can you can do that using after that you can modify the firewall and work on it okay so this uh, the firewall which you, you are creating this will be named actually automatically nowadays they decide automatically okay so remember that this is the firewall for the instance and here you are storing the storage how much a vm you are creating how much storage you want 8 gb that's okay by the way up to 30 gb under the free tier you can create no problem but again if you add more storage it will be chargeable you can add more volumes also that two disk three disk something like that you can do that and some of the advanced details i'll ignore it and this is a summary right side one machine there is this ami type is one cpu one 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 ram one gb ram this is security groups volumes and blah 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 and launch that's all so what i did i created one vms instance refresh just again give me one second Today I had created some resources through Terraform for AWS, and I forgot to delete. So I am doing the same thing because one thing is a pro is problem. I cannot delete manually. Why? Because using Terraform we have created so many resources. If I delete manually, it will be not good way to delete. So let it be done. Okay. So refresh. See that Linux box is there. So you created one Linux box. Same way, I will create one Windows box also. So let me create one Windows box. So launch instance. This I'll name it Windows. And Windows here, which version of Windows you decide? Uh, 22 base is there, and uh, others are also there. You decide this. Okay. Now Windows required little bit of more CPU and RAM, so I'll go for uh medium because 2 cpu 4 gb ram and here key pair i have created already so i'm going to use it and that is saturday right saturday and then may this is the one and uh, uh, this one security groups also i've created so i'm going to use existing one and that was two i guess this one and 30 gb automatically is been taken and then launch so see that how it's simple so i created one linux box and one windows box are you comfortable with it all of you yes yeah so now if you see that seems i have to delete that manually only okay no problem I'm deleting manually the instance which I created last night. I have to delete one more thing, VPC, otherwise it keep costing me. This I created my VPC. Delete one. Okay, I'll have to delete after a few seconds actually. It's okay. Okay, so now I got the one Linux VM and one Windows VM. Let's look at this here. 
now you see that suddenly you have got so many vms because earlier i was showing you only running vm now we have stopped vm also and so on now one more thing so now what to do linux action instance state stop start reboot same thing you had in the virtual machine something similar you have it hibernate terminate means permanently you want to connect here you have actions few things you can do that and you can create a new new launch here now if you click on the line x little carefully okay and see that all the details this is the instance id unique id on the aws this is the public address and this is a private address so private address private ip address is a real one public ip address they give it to you so you can connect from the outside of aws their networking so if you have you don't have a public address from your home or from outside you cannot connect so that that this public address is free as long as the aws instance is running okay and the moment you stop the instance this public address will released actually released to the pool because aws has lots of ip address and they keep giving you randomly like this they'll be released okay now let's say you want to say rajesh i want to create the permanent public ip address i it should not be changed so in that case you have to allocate the eip elastic ip address if you click here here you can allocate the elastic ip address here you can buy and attach to the instance so right now if you see i don't have any ip address but you can allocate this one one ip address i am buying here i got it and this you have to attach to refresh this you have to attach to some vm the one which you have linux vm and attach so now this ip address will be the permanent ip address 50 so now if you go to ec2 instance see here 50 okay so this ip address will never change but the problem with this ip address is if you stop the vm this will become a chargeable because you are holding that ip address permanently because of that reason okay and many other informations you have i would suggest you to look at it little care and so on are you comfortable all of you hello yeah yes so how do we connect it how do we connect it so there is one article i have written i want to show show to you how to connect linux so many articles so many tutorials will be there but i want to i want to talk about this one just a second uh, here how to log in linux server using ssh so first thing guys there are so many clients are available putty is the one of the important one i mean basic one but you can use any ssh client in windows or mac we have a git bash also you can use it super putty also there mova is there m remote ng is there all these things depends on your choice now for ssh you need either username and password or username and private key okay the the private key if you have a pm this will work for the ssh command line and if you have a putty then you need a ppk format i downloaded a ppk format in downloaded locations so yeah you can use this one and this one this is the ssh format okay and for putty you can use this information okay now this is something and the few more tutorials are there you can just check it out this is the videos also you have been explained about how to log in the next server using ssh so please focus on it so now next question is where is my putty so my putty is here and what is ip address of uh, linux this is the one ssh 
I have a key, so you have to click on the SSH credential. It will be in recording and then PPK file in the download location. Here it is. Open up and done. Accept first time. And what is username? So username, I don't know. So I will ask instance only. Hey, can you tell me what your username? So click on the instance and click on the connect. And here you have a tutorials for connecting different ways. Still loading actually, yeah. So see that username is Ubuntu, okay? But here also, if you don't want to connect from your laptop, you can use the session manager. Session manager is like a browser-based, uh, you know, ways to access. And many, many, many ways are available to to, the, to this. In fact, you can connect here, and immediately this browser will become a session, Linux session. I don't want to do that. So here Ubuntu, and key I have given, done. And this is how I logged in. You see that become a root or do whatever you want. So now whatever you want to practice in a Linux box, you can do it here. So remember that same Linux box which you got last time in your laptop, you got on AWS. And for that, you'll have to pay a little bit of money. Are you understanding all of you? Okay. Hello? Hello? Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now, after connecting the Linux, you have to use it. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to access the Windows. So, Windows do not support SSH. What protocol it supports? Any idea? Win RDP, something. It's a RDP, right? Win RDP, right? So for that, what I need to do, I need a password. So click on the Windows, connect. Now, if you see that here, go to this here. Session Manager is not activated. For that, you have to install other things, but RDP client. So RDP client, this is the username, this is the IP address or DNS, and here you see get a password. Click on it. Locate the key. Now the problem is this guy need private key which is a PEM format. That is a problem. And I downloaded PPK format. So that is not supported. So what do we do in this case? Nothing great. You can convert this PPK to PEM also. How? So there is one utility which is called PuttyGen. PGen, remember. Now you can download from the internet and in the putty gen you have to click on the conversion import key which is here and don't click here and there and here also export key yes what is the name you want to give it same name pm for file done so now i generated this is the pm file let's use this so go to the aws Download locations. Where is the PM file? I have to rename it actually. And rename it. This is the key. Decrypt. And now your password is this one. So now let's try to do RDP. So open up RDP from your laptop, remote desktop connection, put the IP address or DNS, connect. Uh, it's not connecting. What could be the reason for it? Anyone have an idea? Port has to be open. Port has to be? Port has to be open, right? Yeah, so where to go? Security group. Yes, you have to go to security group. So go to the security group. EC2. Left side. Uh, you can click on the instance also and go to the security group. So Windows. Security. This security group is been used. And look at this here. 80 port is open for HTTP. HTTPS 443. 22 for SSH. Linux, but RDP port is something different. So let me add it. 
RDP, RDP, RDP here, 3389 from everywhere, and then save the rules. So now network protocol I open up and then again connect. See username I copy test it. Yes. Done. So this is your Windows machine hosted by AWS. You do whatever you want. I'm I don't think so. I, I'm going to teach you what how to work with the Windows. Did you understand all of you? Yes. So guys, any questions on this? How to use compute services and how to work on it? Any questions? So what I'm going to do, uh, once the usage is there, you can stop it. Okay, stop means you will not lose the uh, VMs, but it will not be using the compute services. That means stop will save your compute and RAM services. So you'll have to pay only for storage. Stop it. Next time again, when you start it, you can start using it. Okay. But now if you think, okay, I don't need any more, so terminate it. Terminate. Terminate means permanent loss, permanent deletions. Okay. And this is permanent loss. Windows I deleted. You see that here, terminating, shutting down and terminating and so on. Now, this Linux I have not terminated. So here you can do many things actually. You can... These are the things you can do that change protection termination protection. That means you can enable the termination. It should not be done automatically. Uh, it should not be allowed. So shutdown behavior. You can change this and few more options are there. I'm not talking right now because it'll get complicated. Networking details here you have attach detach and many things. Security related option change security group. If you want to change security group, you can do that. Using this image, this uh, VMs, you can create a new image also. Create an image, new image, AMI, Amazon machine image. So typically, what people will will do manually, they create an image, log into the EC, they create an EC2 instance, log into the VMs, do the changes, and then create a new image. And next time, they don't have to repeat this process create an image from the new image like that they do that so few options are there and you can explode it so guys any questions so far all of you have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching